Greetings again today in that name that's far above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you, members and visitors alike. We're glad you're here. We appreciate you coming today. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium here in the Northside Baptist Church in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping doing the hour coming up it can be an inspiration to you. And if you get on your phone and call a friend, have them to tune in, get the Northside Baptist Church Hour. We'll try to be a blessing to them. So we appreciate your presence here. We appreciate you in the radio listening audience. Now the singing and the message will be on cassette tape. It'll be tape number 161. Tape number 161. It'll be available. I'm speaking on the subject. If you're born once, you die twice. If you're born twice, you die once. And so I hope that some of you in the radio listening audience are right in and get the cassette tape. We're sending them out for a gift of $3 each. And the gift is used to pay for radio time. We have about 160 tape listed. I have about 100 not listed. And if you write in and request a list of our tape, I'll send you a list of 160. And uh, you can look over the list. And maybe some I haven't mentioned you'd like to have. We're still sending out the little book that can a man run from God. Free of charge, postage page, to you, paid that you would write in for it. And uh, if you write in for the booklet, we send it to you. It's that tape. You don't have the little uh, guide tell you how to read your Bible through in a year. You might request that. We send that to you free of charge. We'll also send the calendar. If you don't have our beautiful calendar, some of you visitors today might be interested in our calendar. They're very beautiful. They're yours for the taking. So you'll be right down here. Help yourself. You and the radio listen audience can write in and get your calendar. I hope you'll do so this coming week. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards. P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is a zip code number. This is a faith ministry, and we work together in getting out the gospel. I will look you that love the Lord to work with us in getting the gospel out. We're carrying the messages each Sunday morning from 11 to 12, and at 12 noon through the week, Monday through Saturday, out through WNGC. And these messages are going into prisons, and convalescent homes, and jails, and Homes of shut-ins and people for many miles away from here get the broadcast, and we appreciate it. Now, at this time of the year, a lot of people are talking about taxes, death and taxes. You know, someone said those two things are sure. I have a little article here I clipped out of a, a magazine, and i like to read it to you, entitled Death and Taxes. Taxes cow, taxes goat. Taxes pants, taxes coat. Taxes crop. Taxes work, taxes tie, taxes shirk. Taxes chew, taxes smoke. Teach them taxes are no joke. Taxes tractor, taxes mule. Teach them taxes are rule. Taxes oil and taxes gas. Taxes notes and taxes cash. Tax him good and let him know. After taxes, he'll have no dough. If he hollers, tax him more. Tax him till he's good and sore. Taxes coffin, taxes grave, taxes sod in which he lays. Put these words upon his tomb. Taxes drove me to my doom. And after he's gone, he can relax. He can't relax, rather. They'll still be after his inheritance tax. So I just want you to get acquainted with taxes, you know, because in case you don't know anything about them, you might want to get ready for them, get adjusted for them. I hope you're turning to uh, the Gospel of John chapter 3. You know, one of the most uncalled for silly things, and some of you are not going to like this, but if you don't like it, you can leave it, lump it, leak it, or li lick it, or whatever you want to do. But the closing of the Clark County Schools on this coming Tuesday 15, one of the most uncalled for things I've heard of in a long time. Now, you people that have children that go to Clark County Schools, you need to find out who's responsible for that and let them know you don't appreciate it. That's very much uncalled for. It should not be done. My mother used to say that uh, enough's enough, but too much of dog's bait. And so we need to realize some of these things and 
and let people know we don't appreciate everything that's being done today. And as long as you keep your mouth shut, they'll continue to cram it down your throat. And you need to do something about it in prayer and use your mouth and your reference sometimes to let people know that you don't appreciate everything that's crammed down your throat this day and time. Now with that in mind, turn to John chapter 3. I want to begin reading with verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he then the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. That's reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, and the first seven verses. Now let me explain my subject. If you're born once, you die twice. If you're born twice, you die once. Now what I mean by that is, if you're only born one time on this earth, then you're going to die that physical death, and then there comes a second death at the great white throne judgment, which is the lake of fire. But if you're born twice, then you'll only die one time. That'll be, of course, the result of the end of this life. And then if you happen to be alive when the rapture takes place, you won't die at all. And that's explaining my subject. And I want to speak to you about this matter of being born again because it's so important. Now, you can't get to heaven without it. I do know that God's mercy is sufficient for those under the age of accountability. But ere you pass the age of accountability, God will hold you responsible. And you can never go to heaven unless you've experienced that second birth. Now, I've been born twice. I was born the first time over here in Madison. If I'd never been born the second time, I'd have been better off if I'd never been born the first time. And the same thing is true for you if you're an adult, you are past age of accountability. If you die without having been born the second time, you'd have been better off. You'd have never been born the first time. Jesus said about Judas Iscariot, it'd been far better for that man had he never been born. And so you must be born again. That first birth is a physical birth. That second birth is a spiritual birth. And you must have both to get to heaven according to the word of God. Now we know it takes the power of God to perform that second birth. You don't have any more to do with your second birth than you had to do with your first birth. Your second birth entirely of God is a birth by the Spirit of God. The very moment you realize you're lost, you need to be saved, you repent of your sins, you believe on Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Spirit gives birth to your soul. He places you in God's family. The Bible says in the Gospel of John chapter 1, To as many as received him, them gave he power to become the sons of God. You're not a son of God. You're not a daughter of God until you're born into that family. You're God's by creation, but not God's by a spiritual birth. And you can't go to heaven unless you're in the family of God when you die. You must remember that. Now it takes the power of God to place you in that family. Now you can take the mineral world today. It would take a a supernatural power to elevate a mineral into a vegetable. Now it would take a supernatural power to elevate a vegetable out of the vegetable world into the animal kingdom. It would take a supernatural power to elevate a person or an animal out of the animal kingdom into the human kingdom. It takes a superpower of God to elevate a place an individual in the human kingdom out of this kingdom into God's kingdom. Therefore, you must be born again by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. He said, except a man be born again. Notice little verb be. You don't have anything to do with that. That's of God. God gives birth to your soul, place you in that family by the Spirit of God. And the new birth is very essential. Let me ask you a question. There's hundreds of you out in the radio listening audience listening to me right now. 
Let me ask you this question so you'll be thinking about it. Have you truly been born again? If you haven't, you'll never go to heaven unless you have been. You're here in this auditorium. You've never been born again. You'll never go to heaven unless you are. If you die without having been born again, hell will be your destination according to the Bible. Now Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Now Nicodemus was not a drunkard, not a gambler, not a murderer. He was a good moral individual. He was a ruler in Israel. He belonged to the Sanhedrin group. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He lived a life as clean as he knew how and lived a good moral life. And he came to Jesus and Jesus looked him in the face and said, Now Nicodemus, you'll have to be born again if you get into God's kingdom. Now Nicodemus, a good moral man, a ruler, a leader, an intelligent man in Israel at that time. You can imagine how he felt when Jesus said, Nicodemus, you'll have to be born again if you get into God's kingdom. You can't enter in, you can't see it unless you're born into it. Nicodemus, being an old gray-headed man, said, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he the second time in his mother's womb and be born? So he had his mind on, on the physical realm because he knew not God. He, he, could not, he couldn't reason in the spiritual realm. And Jesus said, now Nicodemus, I'm not talking about the physical birth. He said, I'm talking about a spiritual birth. Unless you're born again, Nicodemus, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again, you can't even see it. Now Jesus Christ is not talking here to a crackpot. He was not talking to a dope addict, or a drunkard, or a gambler, or a cursor, or a murderer. He was talking to a man that lived a good, clean life. As clean, or no doubt much cleaner than the average Christian lives today. And yet Jesus said, now Nicodemus, you'll have to be born all over again. He was proud of his birth. He was proud of the fact that he was a son of Abraham. He was proud of the fact that he was a member of the Sanhedrin group. He was proud of the fact that he was a ruler in Israel. And very, very proud of that birth. Jesus knocked that down immediately. He said, Nicodemus, you'll have to be born all over again, my boy. You can't. You can't go to heaven. That birth you have in mind will not get you there. You can brag about being a son of Abraham. That will not get you to heaven. Nothing you can brag about is going to get you in. you got to be born all over again. You must start over. You must start out with a new birth in order to serve God. No man can serve God unless he's born into God's family. And that's a new beginning. You become a babe in Christ the moment you're born again. You begin to grow in grace and knowledge. And as you grow up in the Lord... Then you can serve God as his child, but not until then. I don't care how good, clean you may live, honest you may be. I don't care how popular you may be. Beloved, unless you are born into God's family, you cannot serve God. You cannot please God. The Bible says a natural man cannot please God. It's absolutely impossible. So I don't care how hard you try, you just can't do it. Many years ago, a lady attended one of my meetings in Everton, Georgia. I thought she was one of the finest that I'd ever met. Very faithful in the meeting. But after the meeting was over, we went to another tent meeting in another community. She came one night and heard me preach on the new birth. I didn't hear from her for a number of weeks. I said to my wife, I wonder if I offended that lady. She's usually faithful in either writing or coming to the meeting. But when I did hear from her, I was shocked. She said, Preach Edwards, I want you to know. The night you preached on the new birth, I realized for the first time I'd never really been born again. I'd been a good wife, a good mother. I'd been good in my community. I attended the services in your meetings, but I had never been born again until that night I realized that and I came home and got right with God. Now there's a lot of good, clean, moral people that's never been born again. I had a precious dear old grandmother, her hair's white as snow, I love that old grandmother. She's in heaven today. I preached the funeral when she passed on. But she was old and gray-headed. She had a son that received Jesus Christ yonder in the city of Greenville, South Carolina, which ultimately resulted in me knowing God. And so he came home to pay his family a visit. And he said, Mama, we've been saved. We love the Lord. And, and I want to talk to you about being saved. You need to get saved, Mama. You've been good to us and been good to Daddy, but you... Haven't been saved, Mama. His mother became angry. She said, Son, how dare you to talk to your dear old mother like that? You know I've been good to you, ch your children, you children. You know I've been good to your father. You know I've worked hard. I've been good to my neighbors. 
And how dare you to talk to your mother like that? He said, Mama, I know, I know, Mama. You're as good as gold in that respect. And I love you and I respect you. But said, Mama, the Bible says you have to be born again. She said, Son, don't dare to talk to your mother like that. As good as I've been to tell me that. He said, Mama, the Bible said you can't go to heaven unless you're born again. You know, she began to think about that and that brought her to God. And she was gloriously saved. And the very hour that I was saved yonder in Greenville, she was down here at Diamond Rock. That's where she lived at that time. Down there a little spring on her knees, praying that God would save her grandson at the time I was saved. When she went on to be with God, I preached a funeral. She always encouraged me and loved me and appreciate the fact she had a grandson in the ministry. Now she was a good woman, but she'd never been born again. There's multitudes of good mothers, and maybe some listening right now to the sound of my voice. You have been as good as gold in that respect. You have been good to your husband. You have been good to your children. You have been kind to your neighbors. You've never gone out in weakness as far as going out in, in sin out in the world. You never drink. You never curse. And uh, maybe you never use any kind of uh, bad habits. And uh, yet you lived a good, clean life, but you've never been born again. If you die without Jesus Christ, you'll die lost. I don't care how good you are. Nobody can get to heaven on their goodness. They'll have to be born into God's family. Good moral people oftentimes are very hard to reach for Jesus because they depend too much upon their own goodness. You've got to get, a, get rid of those self-righteous rags and turn to Jesus Christ or you'll certainly die without God. Now there's three things you receive when you're born in the family of your parents. I received them and so did you. Number one, a legal standing in your family. When you were born into your family, you received that. Then you received a name. I received the Edwards name when I was born into the Edwards family. And then I received a nature. I received the nature of my parents. So did you. Now the same thing applies in the family of God. When you're born into God's family, you receive a legal standing in that family. You're then called a child of God. You can be called a Christian. You know you belong to the family of God. Then secondly, you receive a name, and that name is Christian. And God writes your name in heaven. And then thirdly, you receive a divine nature. A divine nature imputed unto you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And after you receive that divine nature, then you have a dual nature. You have the Adamic as well as the spiritual nature of God. But you don't have that dual nature, that divine, until you're born again. You get that when you're born again. And then the conflict begins. You have the old man fighting against the new. You have divine nature fighting against the Adamic nature. And you'll have that battle in your life as long as you live on this earth as a Christian. You may say, preacher, what do I mean? Let me illustrate it. Some of you here in this church today, and maybe you got up this morning, you didn't feel too good, and you said, well, I don't think I will go to church today. That's the old Adamic nature telling you you better stay at home because it's a little cold out there, and you don't need to be going out to church today. But there's something on the inside of you that said, no, you better go ahead. Go on to the house of God. Today is the Lord's day. And you need to be in God's house. You need to go hear the word of God. You need the fellowship. You need to be there. And that other nature, that divine nature, overpowered the natural nature. And you came on to the house of God. That's why you're here today. There was an Indian one time, many years ago, was converted. And he went to the Indian post to buy some seed corn. He bought some seed corn and then... Uh, uh, he uh, paid for it. And when he arrived back home, he noticed that the man that sold him the corn made a terrible mistake. He didn't charge him near enough for the corn. The Indian boy knew that. All night long, the old Adamic nature said, Now, you've saved that much. You just keep that corn, say nothing about it, because after all, the man made the mistake. You didn't make it. Don't worry about it. Just keep it. Go ahead and plant the corn. But you know, he didn't rest well that night. The next morning he went back to the post and had some extra money in his hand. The man said, what can I do for you? He said, I'm bringing back some, bringing some money. You didn't charge me enough for that corn that I got here on yesterday. And sure enough, they figured it up and the man is right. The man didn't charge him near enough for that corn. The man said, now fellow, that's unusual. Not many people would come and bring money back like you did today. Why did you bring it back? 
He said, the reason I brought it back, there's some, something on the inside of me. Some little fellow in there kept telling me it's wrong for me to keep it. That's why I brought it back. Now that was divine nature telling him that he shouldn't keep that money. It rightly wasn't his. The man had made an honest mistake, but the money belonged to the man. So he carried it back, and after he left the post that day, felt real good. He that his conscience is clear, and uh, the inner man was satisfied. The outer man had to behave himself, and he went on about his business. Now you may say, Preach Edwards, what is this new birth? Let me tell you hurriedly what it's not. Just in case you're depending upon some of these, I want you to see what it's not. Number one, it's not church membership. You can join all the churches in this nation and die and go straight to hell as a martin to his going. Not only that, it's not water baptism. You can be baptized backward and forward under the tadpoles, can read out your uh, serial number and still die and go to hell. Baptism saves no one, neither does it help save anyone. And then thirdly, it's not the Lord's Supper. You can go and take the communion every service. Or you take the Mass every morning, die and go as straight to hell as you can go. Beloved, that is not the new birth. It is not keeping the law. Now you have some today that tell you that you'll have to keep the law in order to get to heaven. They'll tell you you must abide uh, uh, by Saturday being the old Jewish Sabbath. You must keep that as the old Sabbath and try to get you under the law. But that is not the new birth. You can keep the law and die without God. If you kept the Ten Commandments, that won't save you. Beloved, you got to have something done for that sinful heart of yours. God must cleanse your heart and soul and give birth to you or you'll never go to heaven. Now, it's not joining some worldly society or organization. You'd be surprised today. Are you listening to me? You'd be surprised today to know the people that belong to worldly organizations and societies that's depending on that to get them to heaven. You have some people today that belong to all kind of lodges, belong to the Masons and uh, uh, the uh, Gooses and the Ganders and the Bear Clubs and all, any of the clubs, you know, the Lions and whatnot. And they're depending on that to get them to heaven. They say, well, if I'll be a good Mason, if I'll be a, a real good um, a Lion Club member, uh, the Kiwanis Club or whatnot, if I'll be faithful to these clubs, then they're mighty good. They have good rules and they talk about the Bible. Then I'll be all right. No, sir, you go to hell. I was talking to a man one time. We was riding down the road. I tried to witness to him. He said, you don't need to witness to me. He said, I'm a real good Mason. I said, you are? He said, yes. I said, well, you got to be saved like anybody else. Oh, he said, no, no, no. We believe in the Bible. He said, we have rules in our Masonic lives. If you abide by these rules, you go to the great lodge above when you die. I said, man, you are totally deceived and blinded by Satan. I said, you go as straight to hell as you can go if you're not born again. There's no organization on this earth can save any man. Now, if any organization could save a man, it'd be the church. Because that's the greatest in the world, but it can't save anybody. you got to be born again. The church is a good place to come, belong to, to fellowship. And there, hold your resources and work together in getting out the gospel. And have a pastor to help you and preach to you and teach and instruct you and pray for you. That's not going to get you to heaven. You've got to be born again. So if you're depending upon any church I've mentioned, you'll die without God. I don't care who you are. And then not only that, but keeping the golden rule is not the new birth. You can abide by the golden rule, be good to your neighbor, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. That'll never get you to heaven. You'll die without God if you're depending on that. And then reformation is not the new birth. I've known people reform. They said, I'm going to quit cussing out loud. I'm going to quit whipping my wife. I'm going to stop drinking too much beer. I'm going to stop doing this, that, and other. And that's not going to save you. You can give up all your meanness. Cut out all your devil meant. And cut out all your bad habits. Quit going to worldly places of amusement. And die and go to hell. That is not the new birth. Beloved, the new birth is a birth from above by the power of God given to you by the Spirit of God and the Word of God. It's not of blood. The Bible tells you in the Gospel of John chapter 1, it's of the Lord. You're born of God. Now, the new birth is a birth from above. You have that physical birth from beneath, but this one is from above. It's entirely from above. You have no part in it. You don't save yourself. You only have two religions in the world. They really... 
Now, one of the religions, of course, have many other ways and means in religion of different kinds, but you only have two real religions in the world. One is human efforts, and the other is what God does for you, the grace of God. And it's the grace of God that gives birth to your soul. All false doctrines and teachings and all false religions in the world is based on humanism, based upon what man can do, or what you can do, or what your church can do, or what your club can do. Beloved, listen, that's, that's religion of a, a humanistic stuff. That's not the kind that God is talking about in the Bible when he said the new birth. The new birth is an entire act of God Almighty. You have nothing in the world to do with that. you got to keep hands off of that, for that's God's part. It is God that gives birth to your soul. God borns you in the family of God. You may say, now preach Edwards, now this statement I'm going to say to you may shock you pretty good. You may say, now preach Edwards, can I know the very moment I'm born again by the Spirit of God and the Word of God? Let me ask you this question. Do you know when you were born the first time? Do you know when you were born the first time? Oh, you say, preacher, that's ridiculous. You may not know the very minute you were born the second time. You may not know the very second. You may have made a profession of faith and then later realized that you needed God in your heart. There's a lot of people that came down and joined the church and, and were baptized and reformed and turned over a new leaf. But they knew they weren't really born again at that time. When they began to really hear the gospel and God began to speak to them, then they came into the new birth. God performed a birth in their hearts and souls. You know when you were born the first time? No. And you may not know the exact minute you were born the second time. And if you don't, don't get disturbed about it. But remember, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Do you know you've been born again now? Oh, you say, preach, Edwards, I know I've been born again now. I love the Lord. I love the Bible. I love the church. Well, that's what you need to know. That's it. If you know you've been born again now, although you might not put your finger on the minute, that you were, you ought to thank God that you have been. That's the main thing. Thank God that you have been born again. This new birth entirely of God. God is sovereign. And when you get to the place where you want God and need God and see your need of God, repent of your sins, receive Christ as your Savior, the Holy Ghost of God quickens your soul, births you in the family of God, places you in the body of Jesus Christ. Now you need to realize that the new birth is from above. The Bible tells us so. It's the mighty power of God doing something in your heart and life. Now, man needs to be born again because he's not good enough to go to heaven without it. You may say, preach, Edwards, or oh, why, what is the necessity of the new birth? Number one is because the very sinfulness of man demands you be born again. Secondly, the word of God demands that you be born again. This book says you must. You must. It's an absolute must. The Bible said you must be born again if you're going to heaven. And you can't deny that. And then the nature of God's family demands that you be born again. Let me illustrate. Uh, pardon me for using these personal illustrations, but I want to get it across. Before God saved me, I had no desire for the church. I had no desire for the word of God. I had no desire for God's people. I did not want to be around saved people. I had nothing against them, but I didn't want to be around them. I was afraid they might try to win me to God, and I didn't want to come to God. But you know, after God saved me, I started looking up for that crowd. I, I started rounding up God's people. I went to church. I got me a Bible. I went to the house of God. I listened to the preacher. I enjoyed it. And I like to be with God's people. And that's been my crowd ever since. I'll take God's people any time. Now, what made that difference? I didn't make it. I didn't make it. Make it. God knows I'd rather be around anybody than save people. And uh, in order to bring a preacher in my presence, scared me half to death. To go to church? No. Not me, not before God saved me. Now something had to happen to make that difference. It did. I was born the second time. Now when I got born the second time, when God birthed my soul into his family, I said, where's the church? Where's the Bible? Where's the people of God? Let's go. I've been going ever since. Now something had to happen. So the nature of God's family demands you be born again. You're miserable around God's people if they're on fire for God if you're not saved. No, sir, you don't want around you if you're not saved. And then the nature of heaven demands the new birth. You absolutely wouldn't fit in up there. Now, if you went to heaven with an old Adamic nature and you were a drunkard or a gambler or a cursor, about the first thing that you'd want is try to find a liquor store up there somewhere. You'd say, where's the liquor store? I want 
to go to the liquor store or the gambling dive or the beer joint or juke joint or whatnot. No, sir, they're not in heaven. So you're going to have to be changed. And the new birds will take care of that. And when God glorifies that body, then, of course, you're going to fit right into heaven. But you couldn't fit in any other way. Have you been born again? Do you know Christ is your Savior? If not, you need to get born again today because you never know when it could, could be too late. I read this story about President Lincoln back whenever uh, they're doing the Civil War, after the Civil War. He, he visited a, a veterans hospital. There he found a little 16-year-old boy that had been wounded severely in battle. And President Lincoln went in and wanted to do something for the fellow. He sat down beside his bed. He said, Sonny boy, is there anything I can do for you? He said, yes, sir, you can, sir. He said, please write mother and daddy that I'm going to die very soon and just tell them that I love them. And, and uh, you write them a letter and tell them about my situation and tell them I'm going on to be with the Lord. And so President Lincoln sat down. He wrote that letter to that boy's mother and dad. Some way or another, that boy found out then he was talking to President Lincoln. And he said, sir, President Lincoln said, Sonny boy, I have the letter. Here's anything else I can do for you. Uh, he said, uh, yes, sir. He said, would you hold my hand until I cross over? I won't be here long. There, that tall, lanky president with that country-looking face reached down and took that little boy by the hand and sat there with tears running down his cheeks on the little boy crossed over on the other side. Beloved, if you have been born again, when you come to die, there'll be somebody there to hold your hand, to take your cross, to help you to the other side. But if you've never been born again and die without having been born again, you'll drop off into hell immediately when you draw your last breath. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll take this message and use it. Speak to these here in the auditorium. Speak to those in the radio listening audience. Our Father, save somebody today, either here or out there that's listening. May somebody be born again as a result of this message today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, and Christians praying, Debbie's going to play for us on the organ. If she plays, are you listening now? Listen to me. If you're here and you've never been born again, if you'll come down here, we'll help you to the Lord. If you've been saved and you're backslid on God, if you'll come down here, we'll help you back to God. Uh, if you're here and need to come for any other reason, if you're here and you want to come and join this church in the way we receive members by letter of our statement as a candidate for baptism, you may come. If God is speaking to you during this invitation, whatever He's speaking to you about it, you want to come forward. You want to respond. This is your opportune time. Would you come while she plays? I've given you God's message. God gave it to me to give to you. And if you leave this building and die and go to hell, it'll be your own fault. If anybody in the radio listener has heard this message and they die having not been born again, it's their fault now. I preach the message God laid on my heart. Ask yourself the question, have I been born again? Have I been born again? If you can't ask that and answer that in the affirmative, you need to check up about it. Maybe you've never been born again. You don't want to die like that. Why we wait? Why we wait? Obey God for speaking. I'm not trying to get you to join this church or any other church. I'm trying to get you to do what God tells you to do. If you want to join this church, well and good. 